I would like to welcome everyone to the Town of Lexington yes. Council work session this evening, Monday, March 18th, 2024. Work sessions are less formal business meetings that enable council to obtain and discuss information regarding town issues from staff members and or consultants. Like regular meetings of council, citizens are encouraged to attend and observe work sessions. However, they do not include public hearings, but do allow for public comment at the end of the work session and unless otherwise called on by council. Council does not take an action vote on items during the work session other than to vote to place an item on council's next regular council meeting for consideration and an official vote. Council work sessions are broadcast live on the town's YouTube channel and minutes are taken for record purposes after approval. I call the meeting to order and we'll go right into it. Are there any deletions of items on tonight's agenda? If not, um, business item number one is discussion of financial transparency, Assistant Town Administrator Stuart Ford. Madam Mayor, members of um, Town Council, good to be with you all tonight again to talk about the transparency initiatives that we have underway and to offer some further information that you all requested at last work session um, and presenting some of the um, options that we have going forward and the recommendations from town staff to you all. We're looking for your direction as we seek to provide information to the public that's most useful. Now, of course, I did go through the presentation last time with you all. It has been updated and modified. We're going to go through it again tonight because we're going to present it on the, the live stream so that everyone in the public can, can see it as well. Um, and I will try to focus mainly on the, the updates that we have here for you tonight. So I'll give you some background. The transparency that we are currently involved in, peer transparency and the staff recommendations. So on the background, as we mentioned last time, state law going back to 1912 has required municipalities to disclose information to the public. And in 1912, they said, basically, you need to keep a record of all your receipts and disbursements, and you need to make a statement periodically about what you have received and what you've dispersed. It wasn't until 1933 that the state auditor's office was actually formed in the state of South Carolina. In fact, auditing as a profession was merely in its infancy going back to the beginning of the 20th century. And some of the things we kind of take for granted today that we expect of auditors hadn't fully developed, such as independence, um, which is a very important cornerstone, is that those who audit the books are independent of the entity. And the requirements to have financial statements that that meet certain standards didn't develop fully until the 60s, 70s, and 80s, and they continue to evolve. In fact, municipal audits weren't required in state code until 1962. And then in 1975, <coughs> with the adoption of the Home Rule Act, a lot of responsibilities that were held by the the state legislative delegations and the state general assembly were devolved to the counties and to the municipalities. And so part of the responsibility of local town councils and local municipal governments throughout the state is to determine the appropriate level of, of information that the public should receive and how that's delivered to them. And so that is your decision as a, as a body to um, to make sure that we are doing all that we can to be not only good stewards of the public funds, but to be accountable for those. Um, I want to move on to what we're currently doing. We pr produce generally accepted, um, in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles, we produce financial statements. And we put them in the form of an annual comprehensive financial report. Um, 
Our financial statement is audited in accordance with generally accepted auditing standards and generally accepted governmental auditing standards, a more rigorous set of standards that must be followed by those audit firms that audit entities that have federal funds. We adopt an annual budget in accordance with state law. And in addition to that, our budget document goes an extra step by being in accordance with standards that are promulgated to have a, to receive an award for excellence in financial reporting for your budget. Um, it has a lot of detailed information, background. It tells a story that makes sure that folks have context for what is happening with um, town funds in the budgeting process. We also are active in the bond market, and we make preliminary and official statements regarding all of our deals, which give a lot of disclosure that the financial markets are interested in and require. Everything that we do is designed to provide information that is useful. Can I hold, stop you right yeah. there? I just want to say I was in my first bond signing yes. this past week, and the bond attorneys praised us because we had glowing reports, which they say don't normally happen to a, commu to a municipal municipality. And it was just neat um, of what they said, and I do think we need to publish that out there of what the people that were looking to... They, they quoted something from one of the rating agencies, and I, I'll only kind of hit some very high-level... High <laughs> I was like, um, I don't, it was so much, I'm like, oh. yeah. um, <laughs> but it was good. <laughs> right. Um, I don't want to interfere with the rating agencies published information in any way, but town is recognized for having strong financial um, control and leadership, that we are very conservative in how we budget and we plan, um, and that we take great care to make sure that we can maintain our um, maintain the ratings that we have from the bond agencies, that we have financial flexibility to deal with crises as we did during the pandemic, um, and so I felt really um, honored to be able to be a part of that team that gets that kind of um, recognition from people who look at entities all across the country. Um, we also are subject to, and we are in compliance and seek to com comply with state Freedom of Information Act requirements. We do have a transparency page on our website. Um, you see um, here the items that are currently on transparency include anything from meeting agendas, to um, information about impact fees, our financial publications, and the vision plan. This is under the government tab on our um, website. Look for the transparency page. Um, under the financial publications, um, we provide our annual budgets and our comprehens annual comprehensive financial report. You see all of those going back for the budget to 2003, the ACFR to 2002. I mentioned some of the awards we've received. We've received the Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting from the Government Financial Officers Association of the United States and Canada for 25 years. And we've received the Distinguished Budget Award for 14 years. And I would like to commend all those that are involved in that process, specifically Kathy and Chad Melvin, Kathy uh, Farr and Chad Melvin, and all the staff in finance. But each department plays a critical role in making sure that what we put in the financial reports is accurate. At our last meeting, we premiered our um, PAFR, popular annual financial report. This is a, a document that's available to be made by various municipalities and governments across this, the country. This allows you to highlight in an, an annual report type format, like traditionally is done 
in commercial enterprises information that would be relevant to the citizens. Um, it is quote, quotes here, it says, provides citizens and other interested parties with an overview of the town's financial results. It's designed to provide a summary of the town's overall financial condition in a user-friendly format. It's a supplement to our annual financial report. It's not a replacement. We also talked to and looked at what others were doing across the state. We thought it was important to evaluate what we do in comparison to others and similarly situated. You have 22 governments listed here. We looked at population. We also wanted to make sure we looked at the largest um, municipalities in the state, but also we wanted to look at the county of Lexington as well. A lot of detail here, but what I can tell you that of this, of the things that we looked at, having a transparency portal, um, whether you pro provide detailed trans transactional data, whether you have an ACFR, a budget, the popular annual financial report, do you provide monthly financial statements, do you um, receive the award for your budget and for the, your annual financial report. Of those, we hit six out of the eight, 75%. And of the 22 entities, um, eight have um, more than six, that's 36%. And only two out of the 22 meet all eight, all eight of the criteria, that's just 9%. We're basically in the mainstream of what folks around the state do that's not to say that's the only way it should be done, and not to say that we can't do more. As we talk about what recommendations there are from staff, we mentioned last time and want to reiterate that we are looking at software to improve the FOIA reporting process and compliance. We want to be responsive and we want to have an efficient process as it, as it can be. And we believe that a software package is one thing that we can do to make that happen. Additionally, we talked about the Transparency Center. We've been meeting as a Transparency Center since the last time we spoke at the work session. We, meet, we met every week for a while and we're meeting periodically to evaluate what we, else we can add, number one, to our transparency portal, and then also to assist in making sure that we're doing everything we can to comply with FOIA requests and get those done as quickly as we can. Um, the Transparency Center, some of the staff recommendations are that we add our comprehensive plan and other planning documents to that, that site. That we have the TIF district maps on there that we do an aggregate monthly report of permits that we issued. Um, town Council receives a report on all um, development that's going on. We would propose that something similar to that that you all receive be added to the transparency so that folks know the things that are a matter of public record that are going on in the town in terms of development. Uh, various boards and commissions, we could add some of the reports that they have. The police department does an annual report. We can add that. And there's a sanitation report. There's water quality reports. There are a number of things that um, are available. And we would propose that we begin to add those in a logical format on the Transparency Center page. We also recommend that the monthly financial statements that have been updated and that provide high level analysis that you all have been receiving um, be put on our um, transparency page, the financial publications, that this be added. Um, this looks like, this is an extract from that. You would have graphical representation of what's going on with the numbers, but also the detailed numbers at the account level and departmental level, and then some analysis from staff 
about the monitoring process that we're going through. They have a color code to let you know if there's anything going on that is not quite anticipated or we need to keep an eye on. So that's very high level, executive level review that's available to town council. We would propose that that be made available to the public as well. Then there's some additional options. This is this this report option one, as I've labeled it, is, is a high-level executive summary of revenues and expenditures, expenditures by department. Very similar to what's done on the nice um, document that you all receive. But this is the the next level of reporting that is available. From this, you can you can go a little bit further down, and option two would be breaking out from that. For example, when we say taxes on that first report, well, what's in that number? Well, it's property taxes current, property taxes prior years, that level of detail, so that you see the accounts where the money is deposited and where the expenses come out of. So on page 22 and 23, you see examples, property taxes, franchise fees, et cetera, business license. We also have the same kind of detail level um, for our um, various departmental expenses, uh, budget to actual at a very high level. The next level down, as you drill down into what's available, is what I've labeled as option three, is de detailed transactional level of revenues and expenses. So on the accounts that are summarized, for example, on that previous report, you could see something labeled business license. Well, this shows all the deposits that were made into the business license account for business license revenue. And then on the expenditure side, you see the expenses that are coming out of the various accounts um, by department. So there's the the information that tells you what this was spent for, which department, et cetera. Um, another level of detail that you can do is what I've labeled option four. We talked about this last, last time. It's simply our check register. It shows all deposits in to the town and all disbursements out. You'd get the check number, you get a vendor, you get an amount. So that's a level of de detail that's available as well. So we've presented it as options. You know, town staff, be we believe that the option that shows each account, that gives you the total for each account that's paid, um, is representative of what the town has done and tells you information you need to know. If folks needed further detail from that, they could request it on a specific account. Um, that would be a level of uh, disclosure that provides a lot of opportunity for folks to, to look and see um, what we've spent on various things. If they have particular questions about a specific itemized uh, itemization, they could ask for that. Alternatively, the option four provides that in advance for everything. The when we were here last time, there was some discussion about H tax. Um, heard from you all at that meeting to pro the option about providing additional detail on that. And so let me tell you what is in here. Um, we've summarized everything from inception of H tax to today, all of our receipts and everything we've expended folks money for, the various projects. Now, as an accountant, I love this. You know, I can see all this here and uh, a lot of numbers, and it provides valuable information. But it is detailed, and it may be hard to see on the screen, but it does show what we spent each year for each project that we've been working on. And we've, when we started this process, we, we grouped our H tax projects, three major groups, downtown, crossroads, and gateway. And so that's the... The reporting has been done, set up to show 
Gateway, Crossroads, and downtown, and then get it down to a more granular level as we go to the individual projects, whether it's a Gateway with the I-20 exit and Jenny Lane, but more detail. Um, this, is, this is good for those of us who, who love numbers and all, um, but we, we also created graphics. In this case, a picture is worth a thousand numbers, I suppose. Um, it breaks down how we've expended the money, whether it's downtown, the crossroads, and at um, the gateway, and on which projects. It, you see there $10.5 million has been expended on those three projects. We also are able to, the, through the intricacies of the state law that governs HTAX, local governments can take a portion of their HTAX funds and reimburse the general fund for specific types of cost. And we do that. And when we do that, we then automatically put this H tax money to specific use. And I want to tell you what the H tax reimbursements to the general fund have been used for since inception. And that's represented here. 3.6 million have been transferred to the streets and infrastructure pro program, which are with setups for things that are not specifically H tax related, you know, the, the tourism related, the big three projects were tourism related. So we've, this is a method for us to fund some non-tourism related, specifically non-tourism related projects that are for the benefit of the town. Um, we, during the pandemic, town council rolled back millage 21%. That's a substantial reduction in property tax millage. And guess what? Under state law, that's basically a permanent rollback because you're limited in what you can. It's not like we could roll it back during the pandemic and then re, reinstitute it. We have to roll it back and then any adjustments to millage in the future are subject to the limitations in state law and would have to be adopted by this council. But you all took the step to roll back millage by 21%. And the H tax transfers to the general fund help make that possible. So that's a permanent ongoing tax reduction, st substantial tax reduction for all the citizens and businesses of the town of Lexington. So part of H tax has enabled that to occur. And finally, during the pandemic, we, we took action to respond to the emergency of $1.25 million. So for H tax, we can provide that degree of information. We, we would propose that we put this on our transparency page, this type of information, um, according to your direction. So that's a broad overview. You've heard the recommendations from your staff. Um, and we will act according to you all, your direction. And we all know that we want to put something on the agenda to vote on, or, do, or can we just direct y'all tonight, or do we need to put it on there to vote on? <coughs> so, um, questions. Yeah, I was fixing to say, we, since we don't have to put it on the agenda, we can just direct them by the majority. Y'all want to start with questions? Thoughts? I'll ask a question, Stuart. Is there one of the more granular reports, options? <coughs> Give me one, two, three, and I guess you went to four. Right. Is there one? I mean, you said it yourself. You're the accountant. Is there one that you recommend? As I said, I think the option two provides all the information that folks need if they have specific questions about a specific line item and are curious to know what is the town spending money on contracts for, you, or whatever it might be. You can you can get that. You can request that general ledger and if there are contracts you want to see then you would request that um, so it provides you the roadmap to ask your question the number four option number three excuse me is going down further to the detailed transactional <coughs> level um, which provides basically your total general ledger for revenues and expenditures um, on the site 
Is that in? Is that on top of doing the check registry? This is separate, or are you just saying number two as being everything that would be out there? So, the the more detailed reports, the options two and and three. Um, provide more information in context. That was an issue that you all had brought up last time than the check register. The check register provides a check number, a vendor, and a dollar amount, and the date. Um, and it shows what deposits came in. Um, so it provides information, it provides detail, but as um, was mentioned at the last meeting, that there was concern about there being context people when they see things to have to understand how that relates to what's going on and so that's why we um, provided these other options for you to consider Stuart I have a couple of questions first of all thank you for this presentation this is beautiful as always I love thank the way you, you work uh, big fan uh, between all four of these options is there any substantial increase in cost in terms of staff work to get these things online or is it pretty much the same amount of effort for y'all um, these are system generated reports and so you know it, it's a click of a button right it's um, going to be relatively um, straightforward to do these on a monthly basis okay so i'd be in full because what i asked for was detailed itemized expenditures so obviously i'm in full favor of option four and then my next question would be, are we able to go backwards to 2015 and post all that for people to see? Well, that would be su substantially more time and effort. Do we know? I don't know. The exactly. ballpark of what that would be? I don't know, but it would be a substantial amount of um, time to get that into a... Um, Can I get that for a birthday present? Because that's what I asked for <laughs> in my top five. If anyone cares. <laughs> my birthday's in July. <laughs> Why would we go so back? So that gives him time. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, um, we have, we could fairly easily provide some information in further detail on H-Tax. Um, I'd be in favor of us going back to the beginning of the H-Tax and, and laying it all out for everyone and anyone to see. I'm also... That's on just the H-Tax. Oh, just the H-Tax. Just the H-Tax, yeah. I'd be in favor of... Also, excuse me, for those who didn't hear, I said I'd be in favor of the... Uh, my microphone's off. Um, going back to the beginning of the H tax and, and showing anything and everything um, based on it being not very costly to go back and isolate that variable. Um, I'm in favor of going forward as, as best we can to be as transparent as we can. Um, I also want to talk a little bit briefly about this FOIA software. I understand if we make this investment, it'll make it a lot faster and easier to respond to FOIA requests. Is that right? That's right. Okay. Um, it would be easier not only, um, it would mostly would be easier for the user. They would utilize the system for everything. Documents would be relayed to the user through the website. Um, staff would have one point of coordination. A lot of times, um, multiple staff people touch a FOIA, uh, primarily the attorney, but many other departments. Um, and if I remember correctly, I'm looking at Michael and Laura because they've been looking into it. I believe it provides a mechanism for any FOIA that has been submitted and information provided for. It becomes publicly available on the website through a catalog, if you will, um, to include if you were to go in in FOIA, um, someone's credit card statement, for example, for a particular month, if that's already been requested and provided before, the system will alert the person of that, provide the document, and there may not be a need for them to submit a FOIA request because the information is available. It may also, um, if I remember correctly, if the information or document is already available on the website, it could pull it or point that individual in that direction because, again, it may already be available and a FOIA might not be necessary because it's available much more quickly through the web. So I'm in favor of as being as transparent as we can on that and cutting through the red tape of making it. Obviously, we have to balance the protecting some of the privacy of some of the people involved and making sure we don't blow any confidences of anything that's privileged. But outside of that, if it's lawful, 
or, you know, if it's correct to be disclosed, I'd certainly be in favor of whatever the investment would be on the software because that sounds automated. Mm -hmm. um, and also, again, to reiterate the H tax going back to its inception, I would be a big fan of going uh, backwards and, of course, forwards on that. And then it looks like option three and four look extremely similar. Is that right? And, and that's what I was fixing to ask, Todd. Thank you, because I was like, okay, <coughs> four looks one way to me and three, but you said three was more information, so, actually. So for, for three, you get the account number, you get the total that's the balance of that account. For example, business license revenue for the year. In four, you're going to get the greater detail that's going to show deposit on January 25th for $8,000 business okay, I don't think they're looking for deposits. I think they're looking for expenditures. Would that well, be the same be, thing in yes, the three right. to where they in, can? In four. In four. But okay. for three, you would get the total that's been expended, for example, on supplies in the utilities department. You'd see a line that shows you the total. And, <clears> and so then, they could just then request the that item. General ledger on that one account. That, one thing. Yeah, that's possible. So, so <coughs> option three you gave us, like, you used South Carolina retirement. Yes. And it's showing PO, PO number and then uh, I guess that's a <coughs> check number, a vendor number, 649, <laughs> and then dollar amounts and then totals. Right. Because the, the, the other one does show the check numbers, like, to individuals or businesses <coughs> in this case. Yeah, the check um, registers. Yeah, so, but it doesn't show what department it was charged to there that I can right. tell, so that would cause some confusion. So on page 25 of the slides, that those are expense accounts. Um, that's in the building department. FICA expense, so it was paid to the United States Treasury, um, and it shows the entries <laughs> and the amounts for each pay period that we've deposited on behalf of um, the taxpayers which are our town employees. And then like for South Carolina retirement expense, it shows you all of the expense for each pay period and that goes to, um, to PIBA. And health insurance the same way. And that's just representation of what would happen at every expense account level. You'd see the individual transactions. Um, I don't mean to um, stop the flow, but while I'm thinking about it, I would, I would be remiss if I didn't thank um, our staff for participating in the Transparency Center. And I just ask if any, anybody here who's worked on the Transparency Center with, with me and others, just to a show of hands real quick. <clears throat> you know, there are eight or nine folks across all departments and various um, activities of the town. And we meet and we discuss and I would say in the last month that they've put in just dealing on FOIA, making sure that, that we are evaluating all the requests that we receive. They've, they've spent collectively on time that's not chargeable to, um, to anyone who's requesting information. We've, we've spent, as a group, probably close to 50 hours in personnel time total on talking about FOIA, making sure that we understand what's being requested and who has the mm -hmm. information. How do we locate that and determine the amount of time it's going to take um, so that we can respond to requests? And not only do we look at those types of things, they, we have been focusing on how, as a group, what information is residing in the utilities department that can be shared that would be of information that folks would like. And that's across all departments. That's good. Um, and we'll continue to do that, and we'll evaluate it. And if folks ha see needs or have requests for information that meet, and we're not meeting a need, we'll look at how we can address it. Thank you. So, so you are doing a great job. Matt, Mayor. So if we use the technology, Sorry, new glasses, I can't do that. Uh, if we use a new technology, somebody puts in a FOIA request, they still have to pay for the FOIA, or is the technology generated so there's no charge? What is there would still be a charge. 
Bill charge, okay. But once somebody pays for it, it's on the website, available to everybody thereafter. Okay. And that, of course, is dictated by state law, or federal law. State. State. Thank you. That, I like okay. I like option three. Yeah. You are we vote, are we able to vote on this? We're actually going to direct staff on which way to go tonight. So are we able to vote on which option we support? Yeah, and technically yeah. you're providing you're Same. coming to consensus. Yeah, you're commenting. Okay. Basically, going to move forward with this option. Well, I definitely move for number four. I think we all ran on transparency, so doing the most transparent thing, which Stuart said, there's really essentially no difference between a button click of three and four, that's a no-brainer to me. But Stuart, well, you said that three was more transparent. If, if, I may have misspoke. So number three gives you a little more context than four because it shows the account where things are charged. Four is just the check register where you just put down who you paid and how much you paid, basically. Like right. Your, your check but that's the most level. granular level of detail. No. Most granular mm -hmm. is going to be number three. And More granular than four. Yes. Yeah, because three is going to actually give the account. So if you see, bought. See. It just gives you the check number and who. No, so it gives you are the we able to post both? Isn't one redundant? It just adds the category. Well, that's so my that's question. Like saying, if you wrote a so check, can we start with one of them, Will? And you know, I, I by think, your birthday, we might can add to it. <laughs> no, my birthday's going back uh, to 2015 with all the. Well, no, I think I think the, the example is is check made out for mortgage is option four, check number whatever. Option three is check number whatever made out for mortgage payable to Bank of America, like it, and it's office well, mortgage like it the, gives, am the, i right or no yeah, no you're correct from so, so three is more granular three gives so more then data. my question would be can we do both well four <laughs> that's what i'm saying is I, I believe three is the same thing as four with an additional piece that of identifying information attached to each line item right so can we do both well because if we did three you wouldn't be able to see the itemized that's like saying can i drive my car with three tires and with four tires like it no it's not okay. this is this is a check register so Concerned citizens can see itemized expenditures, which is what I asked for. So I'll put it this way. Everything in four is in three. Does that make you happy? I don't see that, though. I kind of get what, because there's no, about what I, he's saying. I, I, I there's no I, name to it. It just says payment posting. If you click on it, though, there will be. That's what I'm asking. So if uh, you click on it, you see the itemized Will, if you look at page 25. Mm -hmm. That's what um, I'm I can't find that. Under FICA expense. Right. The who it was paid to is United States Treasury. That's the vendor, right? And so it was paid to FICA ex, under FICA expense. That's what it's for, and it was in the amount of eleven hundred and seven dollars, and it's in the building department. Um, so you get all of that information in three, whereas four, all you would see is the check number, United States Treasury, gotcha. and the dollar amount. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so you happy now? No, that you yeah, I mean, can be I'm, okay with three? I'm happy with the most transparent we can be. I think we all are. So yeah, I'm, I'm completely do. fine with three as well. I'm fine with three. I'm also. fine with three. I'm fine with three. I'm good with three. Um, I'm also happy with the fact of the software package um, for the FOIA because I think the more efficient and the more transparent we can be, the better. Um, I wouldn't mind, you know, making sure that we're within state law and with other municipalities and likeness of um, that 15 minutes to 30 minutes of time um, in preparation or looking up something, what that fee might be. I think that software is going to really knock um, that out yeah, there, right? Yeah, I think the software is going to be very, very helpful. I didn't realize that was even out there. Somebody fix the air conditioner. Good grief. <laughs> But yeah, I think option three seems to be a good one. I would also be in favor of, as I said earlier, the hospitality tax information at the, the option three level going backwards to its beginning. On the hospitality tax. On the hospitality tax. And the oh. other is? And we'll start this prospectively, start now um, for the month of when we get everything for the month of March. Move forward. 
Is that the direction? Well, the question I would have is how difficult is that to go backwards? Are we able to post everything going back to 2015? Why are we choosing 2015? Uh, because that's when that's hospitality tax started. Well, you're going to get an account for hospitality tax. Yeah, but that's when things changed in the dynamic of the town, where townspeople were suddenly wondering, where is all this money going? Because they're adding hospitality taxes, they're adding impact fees. Our people want to know where that money went. Well, so I, if you want to be transparent, I see no issue going back to 2015. You're going to get an account of exactly where every dollar that came into hospitality tax went. So but you are going back to 2015. But the overall budget for the town, that's where people start asking questions. I'm just saying, as a resident of the town, that's when things shifted in terms of the people who live here questioning, where's the money going? And so if we've got nothing to hide, which I think we don't have, I don't think we have anything to hide, right? Then there should be no issue going backwards. I don't understand the heartburn. There's no heartburn. I just don't want to have unnecessary expenses. I'm told by Stuart it's extremely expensive. Well, that's what I was asking Lots Stuart. Of man what? Hours. So we don't have a number right now. So can you what can you Thousands move of hours forward of for today and do this today and if we get some numbers, we can talk about it again. So move forward with itemized expenditures today and then when would you want to have that conversation of how expensive it would be we for town staff? We have to get through staff? a budget first and this staff has been overwhelmed, but right. your birthday's in July. July 2nd, don't forget <laughs> it. Y'all don't forget it either. <laughs> um, I don't, I, I, and you got to see what the gist of this council is. I mean, you're going to have your hospitality, which y'all are telling me, which I hear different out there. Um, I think it's according to the way people feel, but I hear different. A lot of people's not going to dig through thousands of pages to find something. They're going to mm -hmm. just call and ask and get it if they want it. Um, but all of us represent different, so that's fine. Right. Um, I think that we have to make a decision tonight on what we're doing. We have agreed to put the hospitality ledgers up for you back to 2015. Everything will be there. People's looking for all those um, contracts and different stuff. It should be right there, who that was paid for, all the financials. Um, and then starting this month, we will be putting option number three on there. You okay with that? Starting oh, yeah. this month with that way? Great. I think it's great. You? Yeah. Todd? Yeah, it's fine with me. Stuart, I, I just want to say thank you. I know that Absolutely. the mayor and I came to meet with you and uh, Chad and Kathy back in October. September or October. I know there's a lot of work that's been put into this, so I just want to say thank you. Thank you for doing all this and for being committed to getting it done for us. And uh, Madam Mayor, if I may, that, as was stated tonight by one of our guests uh, related to hospitality tax and our ability to leverage those funds for good, I, th I think it's worth reminding everybody that, that since 2015, we have instituted a one-way pair downtown that has increased uh, Main Street traffic throughs by 30 plus percent. Uh, we spent a couple million dollars there, and everybody that drives down North Lake Drive uh, and the widening that recently happened there, I think it's a four or five million dollar project, and um, there was significant increased drive throughs on North Lake Drive all the way through to the new intersection where fortunately we were, I was there yesterday, I was there on parade day, and we were able to take an entire cycle out of that light in front of Lexington Middle School where it had a side road that came in and delayed traffic significantly, and we were able to eliminate that road from the intersection. And so now that, I, I don't know the exact efficiencies, you know, 97% of all statistics are made up on the spot and probably not true, <laughs> but it's significantly more efficient right there in front of Lexington, old Lexington Middle School. Um, don't forget in addition Jenny to Lane. that, in addition to that, we did significant improvements to Jenny Lane uh, when everybody couldn't get into Chick-fil-A and get their biscuit and get their kids to school. And so there was a lot of money expended there. There was uh, money expended on the interstate exchange to get people off the interstate and not try to cross three lanes of traffic. Uh, so what I do want to recognize, I want to recognize the fact that if the hospitality tax had not been instituted, none of that would have happened. We would have all the same problems and we would have done absolutely nothing for traffic flow efficiency. I forgot about Mineral Springs, where it comes into Sunset, Sunset Boulevard. So I want to commend, A, the councils uh, that instituted hospitality tax to do something, uh, because as was stated, the county doesn't have those means. 
Uh, we didn't have those means in 2013, 2014. We came up with those in 2015 and have invested millions of dollars in making things more efficient and will continue to do so uh, with a significant project uh, coming up in Corley Mill area and other future traffic projects. So we certainly want everybody to understand where those monies go and what they've been able to accomplish in the last eight years. So kudos to Randy, you and your team and all of our administrative staff. And We're also, Todd, just to piggyback on you, we were able to give our citizens a millage reduction and pass some of the costs for these projects on to people that use our roads every day. Stuart, didn't you, and I hope I don't misstate here, didn't you tell me that prior to H-Tax we were able to do like a million dollars of work to roads every 10 years or something like that, a million dollar bond or something? The last time we spent a significant amount of money on roads was about 2012, 2013. We did the absolute worst roads in the subdivisions, mm -hmm. basically, and it was over a million dollar project, but we borrowed the money, general obligation bonds, and so, you know, at a, at a million dollars every decade, it, it would take, you know, Till my my grandchildren are born to um, get through all the roads that we own it feels like <laughs> or longer well, so i think that i think that puts it into perspective along with what todd said is like how much the h tax has helped us well if i may um it's it's undeniable the town's done some amazing things with h tax i don't think anybody disagrees with that and thank you randy for all of your consistent hard work i mean we've got a phenomenal town staff the question i would ask this council is do you believe that tax should ex exist in perpetuity because we've done some good things with H tax, I'm proposing getting rid of it. Do you think the citizens of Lexington should just deal with that forever? Well, roads have to be maintained. I mean, if you can show us where to replace the revenues to pave a Let's million dollars, Let's talk to McMaster. We need to talk to the state because that's what Todd Lyle talks about a lot. We have got to get with the state and getting some money from the state okay. instead of us just burdening our citizens with tax upon tax upon fee. Well, upon I agree fee. with that, but there's 46 counties and 200 plus municipalities, right? 200 plus. Yeah, but this is Lexington. We're I important. mean, yeah, but we're still competing <laughs> with all of them. So we've got to be able to have a mechanism in place in our own town to be able to, you know, do our own road maintenance. And that's this is proven to be a mechanism by which which has done some good well i don't believe any tax should be in perpetuity so that's why i'm i don't think anyone up here said that it would be perpetuity that could be a debate for another day but right now it's certainly doing good for our citizens madam mayor yes sir i'll just briefly circle this back hopefully for closure but i appreciate all that randy and your team and everybody has done i'll echo what's been said and i don't want to stay up here too long to do lots of repetition but uh, the only point i'll bring up is no we don't I don't think anyone as council believes that there should be excessive tax into perpetuity. We make the decisions we can with the information we have in the best interest of the town as we know it. The collective wisdom was the consumption tax was the most fair tax based on outside people coming in and utilizing services in the town that did not stunt growth of restaurants. The data said that it continued to grow. Restaurants continued to get used. And I will only address that the perpetuity issue is it perpetuity for, for life? No, but it was a, a sunset clause at eight years, and the folks that calculate those bonds were incapable of underwriting the changes and the decisions that we wanted to make. Obviously, to take that sunset clause off allowed us to have more leverage and borrowing power in order to do some of these major traffic improvements that we've done, as well as what we will continue to do, and that's based on getting, as Todd Karn said earlier, zilch from anybody else. So that was us addressing a problem head on, because we're hearing what the constituents say, because we're seeing what the county's doing as far as 6,000 permits over the last three years, whereas the town did 244 integrally. So when we talk about traffic and roads and all the problems that we're seeing, it's a collective problem, and the very most recent finger pointing is what's frustrating. So we're doing what we can with what we have, being as yes. transparent as we can in the best interest of the town, because nobody up here really gets paid a whole lot to do this, this is not fun. This is a service, and at times it's certainly a lot less fun than it is at times. But I think we believe we're making the decisions that we believe are in the best interest of the town with a collective wisdom to be conservative and be towards the taxpayers' best interest. Madam Mayor. Yes, sir. And, yeah, I mean, all these debates, nothing, nothing better than uh, civic debate and public debate to get to the uh, best answers. And certainly we need to have these debates in an ongoing manner related to the hospitality tax. The one thing I would say is that we have a 
significant multi-million dollar project coming uh, down the pike at Corley Mill Road uh, that's going to take that intersection from a F minus to a B plus, if I remember right, or B in, in 20 years from now. And so if we, one repercussion, if we were to abandon the hospitality tax, uh, that project would have to be abandoned. Not only that, if we were to abandon the, pro the hospitality tax today, we would have to increase property taxes on our citizens by 21% because part of leaving the hospitality tax in place was a corresponding reduction in 21% of town property taxes on people's primary and secondary residences. So it would, th those two things are kind of tied together. And I think our, our mentality has been consumption tax is significantly better than property tax. Every time we can uh, push back on property tax we have. So we could debate those issues another day, but it's important to note that the consumption tax uh, was used to significantly reduce property taxes and those two things are tied together. And I think as the citizens understand that and they understand that this is a usage tax for everybody instead of just them, that they're okay with it if they understand what was done. And the only thing I can say is that should have been put out there a long, long time ago and just hounded home that they got a millage reduction and then there would be no negative for this. Mayor. So I was, you know, on the original crew that I, I implemented, I made the uh, amendment to the motion to put in place the hospitality tax uh, sunset clause. Um, and I struggled long and hard about even voting for, for the hospitality tax. And it, uh, it came to clarity for me when we had Lindsey Graham here. I don't know if some of you remember that we're on this council that time, but we got called and told Lindsey was coming and we were all coming to town hall. And I took off from a whole day from work, come up here to sit down to hear him. And as soon as we got to traffic, he said, nope, next subject. We ain't even talking about it. There ain't no money. We ain't sending you money. And I went, holy cow. He's not even going to discuss it with us. So we're never getting anywhere. We're not even having a glimpse of hope. So we've got to fix it ourselves. And so, Rachel, we've been to the State House, what, three times this year so far? And talking about money coming mm -hmm. here. There's not money right now because it's already allocated to other projects. So let's tell our citizens we're not going to continue to make these improvements with that hospitality tax money. Let's see what they say. But with that said, if everybody's okay, we're going to move on to the next one, and y'all have got your, you know what you're doing. Is that okay? Yeah. Anybody else got anything else? Okay. Next up is the Small Business Advisory Committee Municipal Clerk, Laura Henson. This is your first one, right? <laughs> she went up there and getting no all pressure. excited. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, this is going to be for the Small Business Advisory Committee. Um, we have received 16 applications. Um, there are nine spots. So this would obviously be for you guys to review. I know the applications um, were sent to you all. Um, I'll read over the names briefly. Um, oh, yeah, and you do have the sheets up there where you can circle your choices. I'm not... Okay. Yeah. All right. So I'll um, just read the names um, for the record. Um, the first one is Azmi Jabali. Two is Lori Moraz. Andrea Nazarenko. Jill Smith. Karen Norman. William Rhett Kelly. Wallace Wise. Simon Hines. Brian Nelson. Edwin Gerace. Richard Allen Golf. David Lapore. Ray Ingram, Michelle Sorokas, John Kerrig, and Matthew Thompson. Do I hear a motion to put this on the agenda? So moved. Council Member Smith makes the motion. Do I hear a second? Second. Council Member Lyles seconds it. And Council Member Smith, I would like to thank you for working hard to get this put together. And open up the floor for any discussion you may have but you do have a because there's so many of them instead of us bogging down you do have a sheet that you can circle and if you see mine's already circled with I put my name on because I don't care who knows who I voted for um, but on here um, nine of them that you would like to nominate and um, then we'll give them to her let her tally them up but if it's okay with everybody whoever's not selected to 
be on the business advisory committee, I would like to ask Laura if she would like to reach out to them and ask them about other committees that we have open, if y'all are all open to that. Yes. Madam Absolutely. Mayor, that's great. I think a couple of these applications, as I reviewed them, checked several boxes as being interested. So if so, you did check another box, then for sure. Do you have any problem with this? Was your, do you have any problem with that? No, I think that's fantastic. Okay. <clears throat> any discussion? Here and none. If y'all will circle them, give them to Laura. She's going to tally them up, and then we'll have them for. I mean, do y'all want to know tonight, or do y'all want to? I mean, she can tell us after the next agenda item, or do y'all want to know? For the <laughs> other meeting? Take notes. Hmm? She's <laughs> taking notes over there, you know. Well, so Rachel can tally him. Gavin's and wheels to get. So, um, do we sit here? I mean, you can go ahead. I can listen. Are you? Yeah, let's move. Any other discussion? If not, all those in favor of putting this on the agenda, raise your right hand. Before we move forward, can we put on there too? Um, would y'all be opposed if anybody else wants to serve on any other committees? while we're talking about this tonight, that they bring that as another agenda item for them and the committee they wanted to serve on? Sure. Yeah, no, great. there's no reason to delay. Okay, is that okay? Mm -hmm. So it'd be another agenda item for if any of the ones that didn't get selected wants to serve on another committee, there'll be another agenda item. Are you tracking with me down there? Another agenda item that they can, that we'll go ahead and put on the agenda also. Is that okay with everybody? Yes. Okay. So it was, you, did you? To do it on the agenda. Okay, so it was unanimous to put that on the agenda. Our next item is um, Pilgrim Point Street Lights Finance Director Kathy Farr. Thank you, Madam Mayor and Council. Historically, the town has paid a portion of the street light bill for Pilgrim Point <coughs> residents in accordance. In accordance with the town's residential streetlight ordinance, the Pilgrim Point Homeowners Association has requested that the town again pay a pro rata share of their streetlight bill. A copy of their letter, I believe, was in your package. Um, the town ordinance states that the town would be responsible for one streetlight per six lots, which equals eight lights. So the total requested is $2,337.76. So I request that you put it on the April agenda for council consideration, and it'll come from the transportation budget. So moved. May I hear a second? Second. second. Mm. Council Member Lyers seconds it. Any discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. And it's unanimous. Um, I will say, just for clarity, we have to vote to do that every year for them. I was going to say, is that even have, negotiable? It doesn't sound they, like it. <laughs> they, they have private roads. So. Okay. Uh, our, for you, uh, new folks. Our item number four is accommodation, accommodations tax 2024 applications, Assistant Town Administrator Wesley Crosby. And for everybody that's new up here, I just want to remind y'all that a committee goes through lots of hours of deciding who gets this money. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, I'm going to give just a brief kind of overview of the accommodations tax process that we go, that we do each year. Um, so the town of Lexington receives more than $50,000. That's kind of a state uh, point where we have to have a committee set in place. Uh, we do have an advisory committee who is made up of seven members. The majority is of the hospitality industry. Two of those are hotel uh, business folks and restaurant folks. And then we have a uh, one member that's considered a cultural member and then two other at-large positions. Um, so the that is appointed by this council and it is a state law that we have to have this committee in place to review um, this accommodations tax funding and is also reviewed uh, through a report that we do each year and turn into a state um, advisory committee. Uh, the breakdown of the funding, uh, we received this 2% money from a 2% uh, accommodations tax fund that is from the state they um, basically break that money down to each government entity based on the number of hotels that you have in your, your governing area. 
Uh, so each year we, we get a number from the state that goes into um, our finance department. The way it breaks down is the first $25,000 of the, the money goes straight into our general fund. Then there's a 5% of that balance that also goes into the general fund. And then there's a 30% remaining and a 65% remaining. The 30% is a advertising and promotions fund that is giving to a tourist group. We, we provide ours to the Lexington Chamber of Commerce. That is a group that we've been giving that to that council made years ago. Um, it has to be giving to a entity such as that that can help do tourism promotion for the town and is set up as a nonprofit. Um, the money that we will be discussing tonight is the 65% special fund, which is a tourism-related ex expenditure fund that um, is regulated heavily by the laws. Um, so this year, I'm going to read the item. So I'll give you a little background on that. Uh, so the Accommodations Tax Advisory Committee met on March 12th to review the 2024 Accommodations Tax Applications. Total requests... Uh, were nine applications totaling $211,500. For 2024, the town has available $187,364.30 from this 65% fund designation. Um, I've attached a spreadsheet for the council members of showing the uh, who has applied for these funds and how this advisory committee has reviewed and they want to make those recommendations to the council here tonight. And just to kind of give you a background, when we did meet, we meet um, better part of a half of a day. And they sit through, we do presentations with each of these applicants. They come and they present our their projects to the committee. Um, the committee thoroughly reviews those uh, based on prior um, applications and just their experience over the years. And they're they're a great working committee and they do a wonderful job. So the uh, action requested is to place this list on the agenda for approval. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. Any discussion? Madam Mayor. Mr. Crosby, I noticed sure. that the town did not, um, the, the amphitheater didn't get full funding. On this request, was there a particular reason the committee, I mean, I appreciate the committee's work, but I'm just a little curious why the uh, No, sir. Uh, not exactly. The uh, committee decided to just kind of spread that money around just a little bit more amongst some of our regional tourism promoters. That's that's really the explanation. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? All those in favor of putting it on the agenda, raise your right hand. And it is unanimous. Thank you. Um, I think... That's all the agenda items. Um, Side grant here. But it's just a, for council information, facade improvement grant award, planning, building, and technology director, John Hanson. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, the Town of Lexington Board of Architecture and Appearance met on March the 12th and voted to award one facade improvement grant to KCR Properties, who received a $10,000 award to complete facade improvements to a building located at 101 East Main Street. The project will renovate and reuse the lower floor to convert this space to service and office space. The total cost of the project is projected, between, projected to be between $200,000 and $250,000. Ask for it to be accept as information and direct the summary to be recorded in the minutes. Thank you for that, and we accept that in the minutes are there any con comments from council members Ms. Clayton has your results you want to read them I mean do y'all want to hear them or sure yeah let's do it all right I've compiled everyone's votes and we have nine people we have Osmi Jabali with seven votes I'm just gonna read the top nine Lori Moraz with six votes. Karen Norman, seven. Fallon Hines, seven. Brian Nelson has seven. Edwin Gerace has six. David Lapore with four. Michelle Sorokas with six. And Matthew Thompson with five. So 
So So y'all will reach out and ask the rest of them if there's any of the other boards that we have openings on that they would like to. It looks like a pretty good group. I think it's going to be a fantastic group, and I think they'll get a lot done. Okay. Since, well, I'll go back to this. Any comments from council members? Hearing none, any comments from staff? Any comments from the public regarding tonight's agenda? Make sure you give us name and address again so she can record you. She's memorized about Brewer, 349 <laughs> South Church Street, Stewart. Thank you very much. The leadership, the hard work, the discipline, pulling this all together, including the people that are here that are on your team. I know the job's tough. I do. And I really appreciate this. Your mom's right. You're a nice guy. But I, I, appreciate more, I appreciate more effectively the fact that you're effective at getting something like this done that uh, I can't wait to dive into. I think it also may even shrink the amount of FOIA requests. But thank you so much. You know, Thomas Edison said that uh, there is a better way. Find it. Thanks for finding it. Thank you, Greg. Anybody else? No news media. So with that, that concludes our business for this evening. Thank you for watching the Town Council work session for the Town of Lexington. This meeting was held at Town Hall on Monday, March 18th, 2024. Without objection, we are adjourned. <laughs>